Hey gorgeous, welcome to the Ready to Bloom podcast, which features interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now without further ado, I'll hand you over to your host, Holly Wharton. Hello and welcome to the Ready to Bloom podcast, episode 110. This is your host, Holly Wharton, and I'm here with another solo episode. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about how to overcome your business fears. Now, let's be honest, we've all got fears around our business. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to help you dig up some of those fears, help you to face those fears, and then tell you a little bit about how you can overcome those fears. Because I think it's such an easy thing to just pretend like our fears aren't there. And, you know, we get so used to just kind of pushing them down, sweeping them under the rug, trying to forget about them, but they're still there. They don't go away. And they can often hold us back in business. So if your business is not in the place you would like it to be, if you've got a big vision for your business and for what you want in your business, your lifestyle, and for your family, perhaps, stay tuned to this episode. I think you'll find it very, very useful to help you become aware of those fears, program yourself to stop sweeping them under the rug, and and continue to pay attention to them, and um, overcome them, because that's what it's all about. It's all about digging up these fears, becoming aware of them, and then getting rid of them as quickly and as easily as possible. So thank you so much for tuning in today's episode, and let's get started. So the way I've put this together today, it's kind of a five-step process, the way I see it, to help you overcome your fears. And it starts out with looking at your essence. Now, you need to start out by getting to know yourself. You need to look at who you are. And that's the big question, who am I? And the second step is taking a look at your fears and actually facing those fears, writing them down, be- not only becoming aware of them, but recording them. Third step is your vision, getting clear on what your big vision is for your business and your life. Fourth step is your actions, so it's actually planning out the actions that are going to take you towards that vision. And then the fifth step is the inner work, which is transforming your beliefs and fears. And then, of course, after that, once you've transformed your fears, you've got to go back and create some new actions, because perhaps things have changed once you've overcome your fears. You might be able to dream bigger on your vision and also be more effective in creating your action plan. So let's start out with step one, your essence. Now, again, this is taking a look at the question, who are you? Now, I touched on this a little bit in episode 105, which is the episode where we looked at how to break free from what's holding you back in your business. Now, this episode is going to be a bit different, but I'm going to revisit some of the things that we discussed in episode 105. So if you haven't listened to that episode, I really recommend taking a look at it because it's very complementary to this one. So... Again, first question is, who are you? So you're taking a look at your values, your passions, and your interests, your talents, your strengths, your skills. You may have gone through these exercises before, but take a look at them. Definitely revisit your values and all of these things because these things change. I mean, I know that as I grow and as I change and as I get to know myself better, most importantly, and as I do the work to get over my fears and to overcome my limiting beliefs and my blocks, I'm able to dream bigger because, you know, my fears are eliminated because I've, I've done the work to get rid of them. And so that allows me to get a clearer vision of exactly what it is that I want. And of course, as we grow, sometimes our interests change. Our passions change. They may, you may realize that, you know, you're much more interested in one thing and then you let go of some interests that you used to have. So you are always changing. You're not a static thing. Um, You're a living, obviously, human being that's always growing and changing and evolving. So you need to take a look at who are you and take a look at that on a regular basis. I don't know, maybe revisit it once a year. I've got a lot of exercises on my website, and if you just go over to the blog, which is readytobloom.com forward slash blog, and you type who am I into the search box, you can come up with a lot of different exercises and techniques to help you get clear on who you are. And I think this is really important to have some kind of 
um, assistance in this, because I know when I first started looking at who am I, I had no idea what the heck to do. I mean, I was really, really confused. My spiritual teacher always says that you need to take a look at who are you, where are you, where are you going every day of your life. And in the beginning, I just had no idea what the heck he was talking about. How do you get clear on who you are? That's so confusing. That's such a big thing. That's such a big question. How do you answer that question? Back in 2011, I sat down and put together some exercises to help myself get clear on that and to help other people get clear on that as well. So again, see my website for more information on that. We're just going to touch on that today and move on to taking a look at your fears. So the next step is facing your fears. So I would really recommend that you take a look at writing these down right now. So if you are out and about, if you're in your car, if you're at the gym, you might want to come back and revisit this episode at a later time because I really would recommend you pulling out a journal or a notebook or wherever it is that you would like to keep track of this or maybe just open up a file on your computer and write this down. So just write down what are you afraid of? What comes to mind when I ask you that question? Write everything down. Just do a brain dump of everything that comes to mind. You might want to pause this episode right now so that you can do that. So the important thing is to learn to face your fears. And this is something that you just get used to from doing it. So actually pausing this episode right now, if you can, and taking the time to write down your fears, whether it's right now or at a later time today, just doing that and getting them down in black and white or fancy colors or sparkly glitter pens or whatever you need to do to make it fun and entertaining and exciting and perhaps a little bit less scary, please do that. Because everyone has fears. You know, the fact that you have fears around your business or around your life, that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It doesn't mean that you're any less successful than anyone else because everyone's got fears. And, you know, life and business, it's like a spiral staircase. You know, you're constantly kind of going up, going up as you take those steps. And you might revisit some of similar fears, but they'll be different. So as you grow and as you overcome these fears, you'll come across different fears and you'll come across perhaps the same fears in a different way or in a different context. Or perhaps once you've grown and you're able to handle things, um, the bigger fears will come up. You may have seen this in your own life. So this is just absolutely normal. Learn to face these fears because that's the best way of getting over them. And, um, you know, it's nothing, nothing against you. That's really important to remember because we've all got these fears. So, Sit down and think, what are you experiencing right now in your business? Are there any negative emotions that are coming up? Are you feeling frustrated? Are you feeling stuck? Do you feel like, oh, I'm just never going to make it. I'm never going to be good enough. I'm never going to get all the clients I want. I'm never going to set my prices as high as I want. I'm never going to be financially free. I'm never going to get all the holidays that I want. What, what's going on for you right now in your business? What are you experiencing? Pause this if you can and make note of that. Next, you want to look at what are you procrastinating on? What things are you avoiding doing? And I know we discussed this a little bit in the previous episode 105. Um, but again, take a look at this again in the context of fear. So what are you avoiding doing? Are you putting off creating videos for your YouTube channel? Are you avoiding um, setting up your Periscope profile and creating videos there? Are you maybe putting off um, webinars because you're afraid of webinars? Are you avoiding getting started on social media? Um, Are you avoiding asking joint venture partners to help you um, promote your new launch, or are you maybe even putting off launching something new because you're just so scared of launching because that's such a big thing and everyone talks about it like it's this massive project and you're so scared of it, you don't, you don't even want to get started. So what are you procrastinating on? And then why? So think about, you know, what is it about these things that scares you? You know, maybe you're afraid of technology, maybe you're afraid of being visible, maybe you're afraid of big projects because you don't know how to break them down into bite-sized pieces. Pause this now and take a look at what you're procrastinating on, and then try to dig a little deeper and see why you're procrastinating on those things. 
next. Take a look at what stops you from taking action. So, again, it could be the, some of the fears that you've already looked at, or it could be something else. Maybe you need to learn something. Maybe you need to learn how to create videos, or maybe you need to learn how to create content, or how to do a launch, or how to... Maybe you need some kind of practical information, and that's something that you need to learn. Or maybe it's fears, or maybe it's, you know, you just feel like you're not good enough, or you're afraid of putting yourself out there, and everyone's going to see you and think, oh, she's such a fraud. Do you have that fear of being a fraud? Take a look now and see what's stopping you from taking action, and pause this and write that down. Next, take a look at what your mind gremlins say. We discussed this a little bit in episode 105, but take a look at it again in terms of what are your fears. What are your mind gremlins saying to you? Are they saying, you know, you're just never going to be good enough. Everyone else is better than you. And you know what? Everyone else started in their business years before you did. So, you know, wherever you are at in your business now, it's just not good enough because you're behind everyone else. Everyone else got started before you and you just, you're going to have to, you can't catch up. You know, you're just not good enough and you're not going to be able to do it. So just, you know, stop. So what are the mind gremlins saying? Pause this right now if you need to and write all that down. Think about all the negative things that come up in your mind when you're running your business and when you're planning your business and you're dreaming about your business and you're thinking about all the things you want to do. What do the mind gremlins say? Pause this. Next, take a look at your fears, and I thought this might be useful to explore with you in terms of different categories. I am currently putting together an ebook that's going to be probably a free download that's going to look at different belief statements in certain categories related to business. So, I'm going to bring up some of these categories now because I think that a lot of these categories can be used to help you dig up fears. So the first one is change and growth. What are you afraid of regarding change and growth? Are you afraid that, are you afraid of change? Are you afraid that maybe you're not flexible enough to change fast enough? Are you afraid, are you afraid of growing? Are you afraid of the unknown? Are you afraid of, you know, learning the things that you need to learn for your business and then you know, becoming a, a bigger person that might alienate your friends? Are you afraid of outgrowing your friends? Are you afraid of outgrowing your business friends? What fears might you have around change and growth? Or maybe you're just afraid that you're going to be stuck forever where you are and you're incapable of change and you're incapable of growth. What's going on for you in that area? And if you want, you can pause this now and write that down. What comes up for you when you think about change, big change and big growth? So really dial that up and just imagine big changes in your life and what fears come up for you with that. Next, clients. Now, a lot of people have fears around clients. So whether it's quoting your prices to your clients or not even knowing what prices to, to set to begin with, especially I notice a lot of people when they've got upgrades to their prices. They'll have fears about communicating these new prices to their existing clients. Maybe you've got issues setting boundaries with clients, um, existing clients. Perhaps you, you've got a coaching contract, but you're too scared to even send it out to people because you don't want them to think that you're being pushy by sending them a contract. Perhaps you've got clients that are consistently showing up late for sessions and you're too scared to charge them extra or give them less time or simply tell them they need to be on time for their sessions. What issues are coming up for you with clients? What fears do you have around your clients? What fears do you have around maybe getting clients? Perhaps you're afraid that you're going to run out of clients, that you'll never have enough, that there's not enough clients to go around for all the people that do what you do. Write down these fears, write down all this stuff, because unless you face it, you're never going to be able to work past it. So next category is leadership and outsourcing. I lumped these two together. So, you know, a lot of times you've probably read um, that it's important to outsource things. It's important to build a team around you. So whether it's, you know, someone who does your website or a VA or any kind of assistant or someone to help you out with your business, graphic designer, 
there could be fears around working with people, especially if you don't have any prior management experience, because management is a whole separate skill. You know, just because you know how to do something doesn't mean that you can supervise someone doing it. And, you know, you might even have fears around supervising someone who's doing something that you don't know how to do. Maybe you don't know how to do graphic design or website design, and you've got to hire this person to do your logo or your new website. And you don't even know where to start explaining to this person, you know, what you want. Maybe you've got some fears around that. Maybe you've got fears around outsourcing. I know a lot of people struggle with feeling like they're the only one who can do things. They're the only one who can, you know, set up appointments with people or format their blog posts or whatever. You need to notice if you've got this kind of fear of letting go of certain tasks and outsourcing them to people because that's something that's going to hold you back. So take a look at any fears you might have around managing people, around being a leader. Um, Perhaps it's even about being a leader in your field and being seen as an expert in what it is that you do. That could be scary. Do you have any fears around that? What if people saw you as the go-to person for whatever it is that you do? Is that scary? So pause this if you need to and write down any fears around leadership, management, outsourcing. What about learning? Do you have any fears around learning? I know for my previous business, having worked with people in um, social media marketing, a lot of people had fears around technology. A lot of people had fears of just setting up the technical bits of using social media. And that was part of the work that I did to help people. So do you have any fears around learning? Maybe someone told you when you were a little kid that you were just a bad learner and you're not good at learning and you're never going to learn what you need to learn. Do you have any fears around that? Do you have any blocks? Has anyone at any point in all of your schooling said to you, oh, you're just so slow with this, that, and the other? Um, has anyone said anything to you about your learning or have you formed any beliefs throughout your life about your learning and what you're good at learning and what you're not good at learning? Maybe you just believe, you know, I'm just not good at technology. You know, computers always crash around me. You know, I just can't. Technology hates me. Or maybe it's something else. So write down your fears around learning. Next, lifestyle. A lot of us go into business for ourselves because we want to create our ideal lifestyle. So maybe that's, you know, that could involve working from home, that could involve, you know, just being our own boss, that could involve working the hours that we want, the days of the week that we want. So think about this lifestyle that you want for yourself. And think about what fears you may have around achieving that lifestyle. So maybe you believe, you know, so-and-so can work four hours a day, four days a week and build a successful business, but I'll never be able to. I just don't have what it takes. Or maybe you believe, you know, I'll just never be able to get that house and that office and business that I want. I'll just never be able to build that because I'm just not good enough. You know, other people can do it, but I can't. So take a look at whatever fears are coming up for you around building that lifestyle that you want. Because again, business and life go hand in hand. So it's not just about business. And again, a lot of us went into business to create this ideal lifestyle that we really want. So fears around creating your dream lifestyle. And if nothing's really coming up for you in this, really think about what lifestyle you want and dial up the emotion, um, the image, the color, uh, really build up that image to exactly what you want. Don't settle for less and then think about what scares you about achieving that. Um, Marketing and sales. Lots of people have fears around sales. Lots of people have fears of putting themselves out there, offering their product, marketing it, selling it to people. A lot of people have fears around sales conversations. Um, They think they have to close the sale. That stresses them out. They think they need to get a yes always get a yes. So they put a lot of pressure on themselves rather than having, you know, just a simple conversation with someone about whether their thing is right for them. Um, So think about all of your fears around marketing and sales. And for marketing, it could be, you know, putting yourself out there and being visible, putting yourself out there to a wider audience, being known internationally for what you do. What fears do you have around marketing? It could be technical stuff. Again, it could be 
social media. It could be creating Facebook ads and sales. Sales is a big thing for people. I think most people have fears or have had fears at some point around selling their stuff. Now, even if you're skilled at selling other people's stuff, perhaps you've worked in sales in the past, that doesn't mean that you're going to be great at selling your own products and services. That can be the big thing that trips people up. I know my background was in online marketing, and I was really good at marketing stuff in my first business, which was in the hospitality industry. I was great at marketing that. It was beautiful. I'd created this amazing place, but it wasn't just me. It was, you know, me, it was my business partner, it was a whole team of people. So I was just this person kind of behind the scenes that had created this place, but the place wasn't about me. When I quit that business and started up my coaching business, that was when I realized it was all about me. And I was marketing myself. And that was when the fears came up. And that was when I realized I had the technical skills to market myself and my business. But I also had a whole boatload of fears around marketing myself. So again, fears, write down anything you've got around marketing and sales. Next, money. Money's a huge issue for people. I can't even get started here. We've got loads of great episodes on money and how you can overcome your money stuff. Um, We've got a great episode with Denise Duffield Thomas. We've got Kate Northrup. Uh, Kate was episode 97. Denise was earlier than that. She was episode 90. So we've had lots of people talk about money in this. So think about what your money stuff is. And if you haven't read Denise's book, I highly recommend that you check out her episode, check out her book, and she will help you uncover your money stuff. Next. So again, pause this if you need to and write it down. Personal power. A lot of people just don't feel strong and powerful. They feel like they've got to kind of hide in the corner and just not, you know, let not let anyone see them. Can you even hear my voice? I was trying to be small there. So I was speaking quietly and a lot of people do this online rather than speaking confidently and speaking, you know, like they've got great self-esteem and that they're, you know, proud of themselves and what they do and that, you know, they know what they're doing. So think about from a, you know, perspective of personal power, what fears do you have there? Do you have fears of being powerful? Do you have fears of being seen? Do you have fears of putting yourself out there for your business? Next, strategy, clarity, and vision. Do you have any fears around creating strategy? Maybe you believe that you don't know how to create a business strategy. Uh, Maybe you believe that you don't have, you just don't have clarity for your business. You just don't know how to plan a business. You don't even know how to imagine what it is that you want. Vision. Maybe you've got issues around, again, playing small and having a small vision. Think about all the fears that come up for you when you think about creating a clear strategy for your business vision. And write those down. Um, Next, success and opportunities. Do you believe that everyone else always gets the good opportunities and you don't? There's never anything left for you because everyone else has got all the good stuff. You're just unlucky. You know, you just, you're just not going to be successful. What fears are coming up for you around that? And what fears are coming up for you as I say these things, as I pretend to be your mind gremlins, which may or may not be your mind gremlins? You know, do you have fears around being successful and then your family thinking you're a snob or your friends not wanting to hang out with you anymore? You know, you might need to upgrade your friends as you upgrade your life. And that's okay. But there may be some fears around that. So write down any fears you have around being successful. And again, really dial up that image of your success and think about what success means to you. And then think about, oh, what's what's scary about that? Next, value and self-worth. So think about anything that's coming up for you around your self-worth and the value you have to offer the world. And this may go back to, you know, feel like, feeling like being a fraud. Lots of people have that. They're afraid of being caught out. They're afraid of putting themselves out there. And then people say, ugh, what is she talking about? She doesn't know what she's talking about. Oh, she's such a fraud. So take a look at your self-worth. You know, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your self-worth? Do you value yourself? Do you value your knowledge and your experience and what you have to offer people? Write down all of your fears you have around those areas. Next, visibility. This is another big one, and I've touched on this quite a bit, both in this episode and episode 105. 
what are you afraid of being visible? Are you afraid of being uh, doing videos? Are you afraid of being on social media? What things are you not doing because you're afraid of putting yourself out there? So pause this if you need to and write that down. I really hope that this section has been useful to you because I think that looking at the different categories really helps you to kind of dredge up some of those fears. And again, please take the time to write these down because if you don't write them down, you're, they're just going to slip your mind because it's so easy to forget about our fears because we don't want to look at them. They're painful and they're scary. So next step, step is your vision. That's step number three. So get clear on what your ideal business is. What does it look like? What does it sound like? What does it feel like? Really build this up. Stop this in a couple minutes once I get through the section and write down, it may take, you know, three, four, five pages more. Write down all the details. What does your big business vision look like? And again, that's business and life. So include your lifestyle stuff in there. How many hours do you want to work? Where do you want to work? Where do you want to live? What do you want your business to look like? What do you want your team to look like? And make it big. Don't play small. Don't settle for less. You know, often I was just writing out something for myself the other day. I was we're hoping to move to a new house this year. And so I was writing down all of my requirements for what I want for my ideal house. And I found myself playing small. So even though I knew that the exercise was my absolute ideal house, I was, you know, making concessions. I was just kind of going, oh, well, you know, I would like this, but it's okay if I get that. And I stopped myself and I crossed some things out and I changed some things because I realized that I was playing small. I wasn't doing my absolute big vision for what kind of house I wanted. So this is just an exercise. No one else has to see this. Write it all down, all the stuff that you're too afraid to, sell, to say to someone, things that you're too afraid to tell your business mentor or your coach or your friends or your family. What is it that you really, really want for your business and your life? Make it big, make it scary, and spend some time on this. It could take you half an hour, it could take you more. Pause this if you can right now and write that down. Spend all the time you need to and make it big and scary. Next, step four is your actions. So this is all about how you're going to achieve this big vision. So break it down to steps and create an action plan. Write down everything you need to do, big and small, to get your business moving towards that big vision. You probably won't need, know at this point all of the things that you need to do, but just dump everything out of your brain into a list and write down everything you think you need to do to get there. Now, of course, your plan will change as you go, but I want you to write down all of the action steps because what we're going to do next is we're going to go back to your fears and take a look at what fears you may have around these actions. What might stop you from taking these actions? And why won't you achieve this big vision? Are you not good enough? Do you not know enough? Maybe you just don't have the right business coach or you don't have the right knowledge. What fears are coming up for you around why you might not or won't achieve this big, scary vision you have for your business? Which action steps scare you from your plan? And which tasks do you just balk at doing because you think, ugh, that sounds really boring. Now, some of these action steps that you don't like are things that you could outsource to someone else. Definitely, you can outsource a lot of things, but some things you're going to have to do yourself. And which of those things are you afraid of doing? So take a look at that. That's really, really important because looking at this big vision and looking at your action plan will help you get clear on some more fears. So add those fears to the list. So step five is taking a look at the inner work. And what that is, is that's all about reprogramming your fears and creating new beliefs. So as I've discussed before on many different episodes, this is something that I do using a technique called Psych K, which works at the subconscious level to reprogram your beliefs and to create positive beliefs where negative beliefs and fears existed. So there are loads of different techniques that do this. You need to find the one that works best for you. It could be Psych K, could be EFT or tapping, uh, could be hypnotherapy, it could be 
TAT is something that someone did once with me, NLP. There's so many different techniques out there. So find whatever works for you. But I think it's really important to work at the subconscious level because the subconscious is where it's all happening. Subconscious mind is where your attitudes, your beliefs, your values are stored. It's what creates your belief programs. And then these belief programs that are created between birth and ages six or seven are what run throughout our lives automatically, meaning that oftentimes we're running on autopilot in kind of submission to our fears. So that's why it's so important to work at the subconscious level, because your subconscious mind, supposedly, according to theory, is in charge of 95% of what's going on with us. So yeah, definitely work at the subconscious level. Find the technique that works best for you, whether it's Site K. If you think you might be interested in Site K, you can book a free call with me to talk about it, to learn a little bit more about what it is. And uh, again, you might want to try a couple of things before you find what's best for you. But do the research and do the work. So work with yourself. If you are a Site K facilitator or if you are an EFT practitioner, or if you're, yeah, I don't know if you can hypnotize yourself. If you're, um, yeah, an NLP practitioner, you can work with yourself or you can work with someone else. So again, find the best way to work on this stuff for you. So finally, I know we've done a lot during this episode. This wasn't one of those passive episodes where you just listen to things. Last but not least, I think it's important to take action today. So things you can do today as a result of listening to this episode. First of all, get clear on your vision and get clear on your fears, which hopefully you've written down throughout this episode. Face your fears. And by writing them down, you're facing them. And maybe read through them so that you're really clear on what's going on with you and and where you are in your business and your life. Next, you need to do the work to transform those fears and those limiting beliefs and then take inspired action. Because once you've transformed your fears and you've, you know, cleared them out, gotten rid of them, you're going to have a bigger vision. So you might want to actually go back to step three, which is vision and step four, which is your action plan. And, and again, this is more about the spiral staircase. So you've done your vision, you've done your actions, you've done the inner work, you've taken those steps up on that spiral staircase. Then you can dream bigger. Then you can create a better action plan. Then you'll have more clarity around what it is that you can do and what you want to do. And then from there again, it goes you know, back to doing the inner work. So this is very much a spiral. And I've done so much of this inner work. I've done so much work on my fears, my blocks, my limiting beliefs, all my stuff. But it's never ending. I mean, I've come so far. I've changed so much as a person. And I can see that it's a direct result of the work that I've done ever since I trained as a Psych K facilitator. But new stuff comes up all the time. Now it's less and less because I've done so much work. But as I take new actions and as I dream bigger, new stuff comes up. So again, think of this as the spiral staircase, not as something that you're going, like a full cycle that you're just going to complete and then it's done. Because if you are in a path of personal and business growth, you're always going to be growing. So thank you very, very much for tuning in today for this episode. I really, really hope that you found it useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Um, You can do that at holly at readytobloom.com. And again, that's ready, the number two, bloom.com. Or you can just check out the show notes um, for this episode. And I'm also preparing a special download with kind of a worksheet where you can have all the questions um, because I know not everyone that listens to this is total auditory learner. So I'm going to prepare a worksheet and you can get the worksheet at readytobloom.com forward slash 110 download. And I'll also have that link in the show notes. So again, thank you so much for listening and remember to visit readytobloom.com forward slash 110 for the show notes on this episode. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to the Ready to Bloom podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's guests, including links for topics that were discussed at readytobloom.com. That's ready, the number two, bloom.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave us a quick review of this podcast. Thank you so much.